What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. I'm going to move the mic just a little bit closer here. I wasn't prepared properly. So, I had a couple emails about this video, and I know um, Ziggy did a video also a couple days ago on this, and I wanted to touch on a little bit of my thoughts on this. So, what I want to do with this, I'm going to do it as a two-part series. Uh, first part being today, of course. And what I'm going to do is, once I'm done with a little bit of a spill here, I'm going to go ahead and then cut right to the part of the video. I want you guys to watch it, make many comments you want, read through them and stuff. And then tomorrow, I'm going to post part two with just some of my thoughts on to this. So if you remember, well, actually, let me go back down here. This was done. I want to give the person credit. Luca Nation Network. Really surprising. It only has 295 views uh, from back in August 2021. So a while ago, definitely a while ago, this was done. Um, pretty much, we're coming up, what, about 10 months now on to it, a little bit more, I don't know, somewhere around there. But, really interesting, this talks about the guy in the bottom left corner, Dan, was part of this Millionaire's Zoom with Gary V. And I think he said it was like 20 or 30 people, something into it. And basically, uh, they all start talking sports cards, making these little groups and stuff, one for Pokemon, Star Wars, and etc., and they basically, uh, Gary comes out and says, why don't you grab some of your friends from the sneakers, cannabis market, and all this stuff. And they don't, they, these people didn't know nothing about sports cards. So just listen, I'm going to play about, I don't know, probably about 10 to 15 minutes of this clip. I'll put a link at the bottom or in the description too if you guys want to watch the whole hour long part of it. But really interesting, it just brings back to one of my original scenarios that I talked about a year and a half ago when Gary V. well, was bursting on there saying bye and this play or that. It goes into play to where I said if, I, if me and about 10 of my friends were millionaires and we decided to gobble up part of the market, what would happen? Just was my thoughts on to it back then, but just listen to this video. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go big screen with it here. I won't be making any commentary. It's uh, all off of their stuff here. But I just want you guys to listen to it, then think about it, make some comments on to what's being said and talked about. And then I will be back tomorrow with some of my thoughts on to it. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and prepare to go big with this here uh, so you guys can see it full screen. And also seeing some of the interesting characters that have now integrated themselves in, obviously, with DJ Ski. Doing his multiple days at Tops, Steve Aoki with Tops, Ben Baller with Tops, seeing all like what TriStar did, bringing in Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. Like there was so much action everywhere from Panini and PSA and Golden Auctions. Like they're just so much bigger and there's so much action every night. There's a different event. I love it, and, and we we just talked about that with Cage, like the artist coming into the hobby that moves it forward, right? Because this traditionally has been a hobby of like. Guys ripping wax, completing sets, and things like that. But seeing guys, like you said, like artists, traditional creatives, traditional artists coming in and adding that touch. I'm curious. I know you're kind of like a part of that crew. Do you think like that's what helped cards go kind of more mainstream and become more culturally relevant? Having guys like Steve Aoki, DJ Ski, and the people that you mentioned to join the hobby? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I they're literally the founders of my company. So mm -hmm. I... <laughs> I mean, I can't say more bluntly than that. Like, I believe that anytime you can get massive amounts of eyeballs from Logan Paul and Ben Baller and different artists and entertainers and athletes, it's just huge for the entire industry. It actually frustrates me when I see some of the traditional hobbyists getting mad, like, about some of these things that are happening. The more eyeballs that come in, the more the game gets more fun and you have to adapt to it. There's more interest. You had over a million or two million. I've, I've seen different stats about one to two million new hobbyists coming in and buying and collecting cards. You're obviously seeing eBay go through the roof and start doing endorsement deals with guys like Steve Aoki to help it expand it. You're seeing such mainstream like sports channels adding on them, opening up packs of cards. Like you want all of that. Whether you've been doing this for 10 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you want new fresh blood into the game. It helps the entire market. And yes, of course the traditionalists, the, there's different twists and turns and, how they feel about it, but overarching, getting millions of people into into your hobby is exciting. And so the way that actually all happened, let's might as well tell you a behind the scenes story. So 
the national, I, as I mentioned, I was walking around with Gary for those few days. We get back and we start a group chat. And the group chat is just a bunch of like Gary's friends and different business guys and friends. And we're all just talking about the, you know, the national, what happened, what we bought, what did you get, what'd you buy, what'd you buy. I only bought a couple of LeBrons and a couple of Jordans. And at the time, the, the LeBrons were $1,050. And so a lot of people have heard that Gary bought 53 LeBrons for $1,050 each. I watched him do the wire during the national. And so I only bought a couple of those. I bought a couple of Jordans. I bought a couple of Lucas. And when I get back, I see like a thousand dollar LeBron go to 1400 and then 1700. And so my little business brain gets buzzing. I'm like, wait, this is interesting. The group chat gets so big. We start a second group chat and we start a Pokemon group chat. And then Gary says, why don't you invite some of your friends that are, that may have collected in the past, but don't have any cards now business friends, cannabis friends, music guys, get them, let's get them all into a Zoom call and just explain what we're doing and why. So that's where Rob G never had a card before that day. Now he's got tens of millions of dollars in cards. Steve Aoki, Lewis Howes, the podcaster, cannabis executives, real estate executives, business executives are all on that first Zoom call with 36 guys. During that call, it was just Gary explaining his passion. You could feel it, right? You can still feel it, but like he was you know, it's intoxicating. Everybody wanted to be a part of it. Out of 36 guys, 27 of them start buying and like a dozen-ish go nuts, right? Those dozen-ish probably have 60 or $70 million in cards now. The day before that Zoom call, they had zero, like actual zero. And so to watch how deep Aoki's got, how deep some of these podcasters have got, obviously how deep Rob G has got buying the most expensive cards in history, like that – having that happen is huge for the entire market because if all of a sudden Rob's spending $5 million on a baseball card, that helps the whole market. The amount of press that happens. If Aoki all of a sudden is opening up packs and Logan Paul's opening packs and these things are happening it all stemmed from one zoom call, like just telling people why we like the game. Now I'm proactively trying to do that at all times, right? Whether it's events, whether it's charity events, whether it's social media content, Constantly trying to bring interesting characters in, whether they're going to buy a little bit of cards or lots of cards, who knows, but getting them interested in it usually has an emotional attachment to their past, to their childhood. And then what they take from it and what they do with it, like I said, some people didn't buy anything. Some people went nuts. So Dan, I love the story and, you know, the beginning of it, I'm, I'm sitting here going, wow, you know, it's culture and it's cards and it's people coming in and it's, it's great, but I'd be remiss you know, to our audience, if I didn't ask this follow up on it, right, it sounds like a masters of the universe type of scenario where you're talking about 30 people in a group who magically and coincidentally, the hobby has gotten hot in the last 18 to 24 months. It coincides with the same time that Gary comes into a group with a bunch of rich folks and says, hey, everybody buy because I love it. Now, it's not there's no manipulation. There's no intention. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved his passion. Everybody said, go ahead and buy these things. Everybody thought LeBron was too cheap at that $1,000. And look, it's at $18,000 now. And it was like significantly higher than that. I guess my concern is, and maybe you can you know, help me with that and maybe help the audience with that is, you know, Gary comes on pretty often and he says things like, Hey, you know, NFTs, it's like internet, uh, 2007, you know, 98% of this is going to fail. Only the good stuff is going to survive. Um, and then, you know, he comes on and says, buy V friends, but then comes on this week and says, Hey, V friends are expensive. Go buy world of women NFTs. Right. You know, he, he does his thing. Right. So, so do you envision a time where Gary comes into that group and says, Hey guys, we, you know, we, we got too far out ahead of our skis start, not DJ ski, but you know what I mean? Um, you know, we, you know, we, 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 maybe we should pair back. And then that group, which has now 50, 70, 80, hundred million dollars worth of cards, says, all right, we're going to start dumping these onto the market and everybody's left holding a bag. Should we be worried about that? So, yeah, so let's walk through. Let's unpack all of it. Yeah, please. So, so a couple of things. One, Gary's very competitive. So he he buys a lot of the cards that even when I want, like the Kevin Durant auto, he'll go buy it at the auction for the last second. Like he's he's in the game. The wait, wait, of wait. he's bidding against you? Oh, he, yeah. You're messing with me like, you sniped me, you bastard. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> we're, he's in full-fledged battle mode at all times. Uh so a couple of things. One, in the group chat, for example, people are buying completely different cards, right? You've seen Gary talk about like a Kevin Durant card being undervalued, LeBron being undervalued, Michael Jordan being undervalued. It's not exactly rocket science. Like he's just saying the couple of the main Hall of Fame stars like that he likes, that's it. He's not out saying go buy this exact card or this exact thing. 
He's also buying wrestling and stickers and weird garbage pail kids and all sorts of things across the board. It ends up being, who knows, 10 or $20 million worth of stuff. But he doesn't sell. Like, I, I want to buy stuff from him, and I can't because he just doesn't sell. He's too rich. What's the point? Right? So oftentimes I hear people about him manipulating. The guy's got so many $100 million plus exits and 900 employee companies. Like, who cares about a couple million dollars? Like, get over yourselves. Like, it's not... Him buying a car for 400 bucks, selling for 700, it's never gonna do anything for Gary Vee. Let's just be blunt. Next, the the group, they argue, they buy different stuff, they buy Star Wars, they buy Pokemon, there's buying football and baseball and vintage. And how dare you, Dan? Why are you buying Kendrick Nunn? That's so stupid. And why are you buying LeBron James? You should buy bubble. Like, it's constant warfare. It is not like <laughs> it's just not. You know, it's a it's a constant thing that these guys love the game, they love battling. <laughs> And uh, there is not gonna, there is no version of a dump because these guys are lifelong collectors and most of them are extremely wealthy from their other businesses. This is not like a whatever you call it. Anyways, there was no intention or no. I mean, it's it's great and it's a great answer. It really is, especially if, if everybody's just in this for the long term and everybody wants to buy this stuff. I mean, look, I mean, people allowed to sell these things, they get ahead of themselves, yes. right? I mean, there are certain things that you'd be nuts not to take a profit on, but it's not a grand scheme. You were hearing it from a guy in the chat, one of the OGs <laughs> of that chat. He's, he's saying, hey, guys, we did not come in, create a uh, multi-level marketing scheme with, with Instagram group chats and, and, and decide that we're just going to crap on the entire hobby. It's not the point. And also, you now have brick and mortars that are expanding, right, and a brand that's expanding outside of the West Coast and all over the country where you're expanding and looking to hire. And, you know, that would just kill that, right? I mean, like, you know, all the hobby momentum that, that you know, that you and Gary and the group and everyone has created um, would just die. So I'll give you a compliment on this, right? I walked the Nationals my first time at the National. And the thing that surprised me the most was it was the combination of two things, right? The cultural aspect, the artists who were there, you know, the fact that, that you know, Happy Hours is being hosted by, by the tops artists, Blake Jameson and, and, and you know, your blood Ben Baller and DJ Ski doing his whole thing where people are literally getting it there and listing it on eBay and selling it for 5X of what they're getting the things for. I mean, it's an amazing, that collision of culture and breaking, 